So let's take a look. This is what we're going to be creating today. This sidebar, which is going to go in our singular blog posts, which has got dynamic data referring to the author of the actual post. Let's get started. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in to my back end of my Generate Press website and go to Appearance, then Elements. I'll add a new element here. And this is going to be a block. Now I'm going to want to come down to all singular for my display location. We're going to change the element type on the right hand side here from a hook to a right sidebar and we can keep the width as it is. So let's add a title. We'll call this our author sidebar. We're going to add a container. If I can spell it properly. Let's add a container here. Let's add a grid to keep this all tidy. And this is a 100% width container. So everything is going to be on its own row. It'll be a single column container, a single column grid, sorry. So first let's go and add the profile image. Oh, so once we've added it, we can come down to dynamic data here and enable dynamic data. Then the data source is going to be the current post. The image source is going to be the author avatar. So that's fine. And we'll just center it as well. Center this container. Then we can add a headline. And again, if we click here, on the database icon we can select a dynamic text type and this is going to be our post author name add a prefix here if we want to um, i'm not going to bother you can also add a link here so if you want to add a link to maybe like the author's own archive page um, you can do that there but i'm going to leave it as it is and now we're going to add a dynamic content block and we can choose that here the author description that's great but maybe we want to add a wee headline above so i'm just going to click on this headline and we will duplicate it we can just make this into a paragraph as well and i'll make it bold font way semi bold just do that and we'll put here about the author. Okay, so now before we go about adding the social links, we're going to want to come back to the back end of WordPress. And you want to add the advanced custom fields plugin to your website. I've already done so. Once that's installed and activated, you come into the advanced custom fields tab here. And we're going to want to add a new field group. So let's do that. So we can name it up here at the top. We're going to call it social links. And now we can add in social links, which are going to be fields associated with each user. That means that we can set Instagram, Facebook, etc. links that are specific to each author that publishes on the website. And then our dynamic data will actually pull through that link instead of us setting it statically each time. So I'm going to set these up now. First, we'll select type of URL. Then we'll name it. This is the label that will show up in the user's setup page. Let's call it Instagram. And then that will automatically be generated. Instagram, all in lowercase. So we'll add a couple more. So now you'll see that I've added a few more links. If we scroll down, we can set the location rules. So by default, this is going to attach to posts. We want to change that to user form and we can just set it for all at the moment. Click save up the top. And now I've come in to the user that I want to edit. And we can see here now I've got some links. So we can set these links up here. Then if we come back into our sidebar element that we were editing we can add another block at the bottom 
and this will be our social buttons. So we want that blue button icon, that's that generate blocks button, which will let us get some nice icons. So we come to icon and we expand social. So let's do Facebook first. Facebook, and then we can tick remove text. So there we go. We'll scale it up a wee bit. Then we want to click the database icon again for dynamic options. So click that. We can ignore the text type and set the dynamic link type and we can set it to author meta. Then we just want to use the title that we gave that custom field. So it's Facebook, all lowercase. So now we can just duplicate these a couple more times. I just went ahead and created my other buttons and attached the relevant link. One more wee trick you can add in is if you come to change link here and you can leave this blank but select open in a new tab. That will just make sure that you're not chasing visitors away from your website. They'll go to your social media in a new tab. So one mistake that I've just remembered that I made is our about the author has still got a dynamic option attached to it. So we're just going to want to get rid of that or four. So we'll save all of that, come in here and refresh. So now we come in and refresh and we can see here our wee sidebar. It's not looking very great at the moment, is it? So let's go and we can tidy it up just a wee bit. I'm going to start with the image. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. It was set to a thumbnail 50 by 50. I'm just going to set it to 100 by 100. I'm going to add some breathing room between this dynamic content and the buttons. In order to do that, what I need to do is add this into a container. So I can click on my dynamic content, press return, and type container. And let's add it. Then I can drag my dynamic content into my container. And you can see here I've got a bit more breathing room. I'm just going to come into the container and I'm going to add a wee bit of padding on the bottom. So let's do 30 pixels on the bottom. And we can leave the top blank actually. We'll update it. Come back and refresh. That's a wee bit better. I'm going to remove the spacing from about the author though. I want that sitting flat on top of the um, about the author, the actual text. And, and by default, this will have a wee bit of a margin on the bottom. I'm just going to put that to five. And then for the whole container, why don't we add a background color just so it stands out a wee bit better. So we can come to the container up at the top of the navigator. We can come down to colors, click background, and it doesn't need to be anything too stand out. Just this gray will actually do as nicely. Refresh again. We can see now it's standing out a wee bit better. But at the top of the content and the bottom is going right down to the border. So let's clean that up. We've come back in and we select the container here at the very top containing everything. We're going to add a bit of padding just to give breathing room between the content and the border. So we're going to do 45 top, 45 bottom. And then I'll also add a bit of padding on the right and the left. We'll do 10 and 10. And then one more thing, I'm going to add a margin to the top, just so that it floats down a little bit. Let's add a margin of 200 and see how that looks. So we come back in, and we can see here now, there's a wee bit of breathing room at the top. Everything's spaced out a bit nicer than it was a minute ago. And I quite like that. If we click our button for Instagram, it opens up. And a new wee tab here goes straight to Instagram. That's lovely. And that is all dynamic, so if somebody who isn't Dylan writes an article, we can come in. These will all be unique for that user, as will the description and the name and the profile picture with the way that we've set it up. So that's great. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching. And if you get stuck at any point, please just reach out in the comments. I'll do everything I can to help you out there. Hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.